Hello everybody and welcome to the Rolando Estacada channel. My name is Rolando Garcia III and for today's episode we're going to be covering Felicissimo Dizon's Art of Mohara, his crowning achievement he passed on to my father who was his private student for about a good two years in the 50s. So I want to share with you what those four curriculums are and ultimately some tips on how to best functionalize those four curriculums. So stick around, stay tuned. cover the um, three curriculums that my father shared with me uh, which were which he learned from Felicissimo Dizon. The first one is Dose Pares, the second one is Doblete, and the third one which we will be covering today is Mohara. Uh, my father first taught me Dose Pares because that was the first thing that uh, Felicissimo Dizon taught him. So when I say that that was the first thing he taught him, he uh, viewed, these on viewed Dose Pares as foundational to Eskrima and specifically to my father's development. Meaning, uh, and this is my own personal view on it, in that it gave you the basics on what the techniques were, what the tools were, what the basic attacks, the basic angles, the basic guards, the disarms. It included Sinawali work, Espad, and Espada Idaga. So there were a lot of things that uh, I believe Dose Pares includes that in my opinion uh, is important uh, in terms of fundamentals uh, for all Filipino martial artists to be exposed to. I think it's a great system. I think that uh, it being foundational introduces, it introduces uh, most practitioners into what the Filipino martial arts can do for you not only as a personal combat system but ultimately as a health fitness practice. The second system that Felicissimo Dizon taught uh, my father and uh, this is where my father was started to tell me that once I teach you this you cannot use it um, in any capacity outside of self-defense and uh, so that means couldn't spar with it, couldn't teach it, it was very much considered a family system at that point. The Doblete system uh, took the Dosi Pares system, in my opinion, and uh, made it more centerline oriented and much more aggressive. And then ultimately, the uh, a lot of the techniques, a lot of the circular movements, they were ultimately reduced so that it allowed for um, greater centerline occupation and it allowed for uh, a far more aggressive implementation of uh, what Dizon's ideal was, which is to get a conflict uh, resolved in somewhere between about two to three strikes. I will say that in my own personal observations, the Dosa Para system as well as the Doblete system still falls under what I call classical uh, fencing. And classical fencing meaning that it is lead tool forward and lead foot forward without any uh, other tactic being implemented. And we're going to find that to be very different and not the case in Mohara. Mohara it being a multiple opponent system uh, encouraged and also allowed for different tactics to be used because it was not married to a, uh, an implementation of the uh, stick as a fencing tool. It wasn't just a lead tool uh, technique without allowing for any variations in hand switching or hand placement. And so we're gonna cover that in detail today. So uh, in review, Dos Pares is considered uh, the basic system, basics and fundamentals. It's everybody had to learn it. My dad had to learn it. I had to learn it. The Doblete system, which is implementation of the Dos Pares system, but a little more pared down. So it's a uh, very center line oriented. The movements and the circular uh, movements were uh, reduced, minimized uh, for increased efficiency, and then ultimately Mohara, which included the four strategies uh, to incorporate for multiple use of the stick, uh, multiple variations of it, so that it could accommodate a very difficult situation, which is uh, multiple opponents. So without further ado, I'd love to share uh, what those four strategies are in the Mohara system. So there are four main strategies that we're going to be covering today uh, with regards to the Mohara system. So these are the four. Number one, the first strategy is called Kabilaan. Kabilaan, in Tagalog, 
Ibig sabihin ng kabila, so what kabila means, which is the other side, to switch sides. So kabilaan means the strategy of switching sides. So that means being able to use the uh, stick ambidextrously, but there's a very specific uh, use for it, which we will show uh, in a little bit uh, in a demonstration, partner demonstration, where it is a great tool for distance management. So the second one is called dalawahan, which means dalawa in Tagalog, which means uh, two, uh, to use two hands. So it is a great intermediate strategy when you're switching from one hand to the other, but dalawahan ultimately means holding a stick with two hands and strategically it means being able to use your core which uh, which we discussed in the first episode so now all of a sudden the stick somewhat behaves like a sword meaning you're throwing your full body into the strike the ultimate intention of this is to deliver such a powerful strike into your opponent whether it's their weapon or their limb so that they are now fully disarmed or they completely stop the engagement so um, dalawahan din na dalawa So I'm gonna say it in Tagalog Dalawahan ibig sabihin nun Na parang talagang sasapukin mo na siya Tsaka yung, uh, yung paglaban na ninyo Talagang you know, uh, ibabagsak mo na talaga So which means that you're gonna use it with such force That you're going to drop this individual And it's a great tool uh, or strategy to use Especially if you're looking at a multiple opponent uh, scenario the third one is called dulo sa dulo, which means tip to tip. So that means you are now holding uh, the stick with uh, on two uh, on the two ends, and this is a great tool uh, or strategy to use because sometimes you're going to have a stick that's not going to be uh, ideal for you. Sometimes it might be a little too long or it might be a little too thick. So being able to uh, use uh, dulo sa dulo, which means that you can use any size stick. Uh, so that you can use it either as a staff, but specifically you can use it for uh, shielding, but also to occupy center line, and we're going to go over that a little bit. The last one, and this happens to be my favorite, is called Dagdag -dag Bawas. In Tagalog, Dagdag -dag Add Bawas means to subtract. So you're adding and subtracting. So you're uh, going over, you're making changes to the distance without necessarily changing your posture or changing, uh, making changes in your footwork simply by changing your, your hand position, same hand with the stick. So we're going to go over that uh, in a little bit, but those are the four main strategies in Mohara. Kabilaan, Dagdag Bawas, Dulo Sa Dulo, and Dalawahan. So in, in no specific order. The ultimate goal of this in Mohara is to be able to incorporate all four strategies in the altercation. That way you can make the best use of that stick with any sort of stick that you happen to have. So as my dad said, uh, as Dizon would say to him, the ultimate goal of Mohara is that kung saan ang kamay mo, kung anong napupulot mo, which means, you know, wherever your hands may be and whatever you happen to pick up, kung napaaway ka, magagamit mo ang Mohara which means if you get into a fight, you can use this system. Ultimately, what it translates to, into is that whatever fight you happen to get into, wherever, wherever your hands may be, whatever you happen to pick up, you can use Mohara as a way to defend yourself. Hey everybody, so this is the section where we're going to be talking about the four strategies, and this is the first strategy of these zones, Mohara. And as mentioned prior, this is Kabilan, and Kabilan means to switch sides. You are uh, switching sides from one hand. So when you're holding the stick, you're going from one hand onto the other hand. The traditional uh, eskrima is to stay with just one hand. And there's, there's some styles that do have switching of the hands, but it's not necessarily part of an overall strategy. But in D-Zones Mohara, it is the strategy. And I'm going to show um, in this uh, portion what is um, the strategic advantage um, of it. Because in the Mohara system, if you notice, the puño is substantial, I would say about two and a half hands worth, whereas in traditional uh, Filipino martial arts, the grip allows for two inches. Now, the reason why in Mohara, why we encourage the two and a half hands is that you switch so that this is where 
the other hand grabs. What it then does is that it changes the distance without you having to advance and expose yourself. So that is Kabila. The idea is um, to be able to switch sides and, in terms of execution, but also ultimately so that you can have a more deceptive approach and you can switch mindsets as well. So with Robin, we're going to be moving around for a little bit and the we're going to be doing what is called the fanging the snake where in sparring we're just going to be hitting the hand so robin is uh, familiar with this but before we start i do want to make note um, that when we're going to be moving we're going to be um moving pretty much stationary and she's going to attempt to hit my hand and i'm going to attempt to hit hers but at some point i want to be able to hit her shoulder just to illustrate the point further with this current grip right now, I cannot actually touch her shoulder. I can't. But the idea is that at some point when I switch hands without changing anything in my posture or making any sort of shifts in my footwork, I can, by a simple switch of the hand, now all of a sudden, magically touch her shoulder. So with the original grip, I cannot touch her shoulder. But when I switch, kabila, kinabila, I can now touch the shoulder and this can create a very disorienting uh, effect for when she and I spar. So we're going to go ahead and move and she's going to try to hit the hand. I'm going to hit the hand as well. So she's going to be moving here. So will I. And then somewhere along the way, as I'm moving, all of a sudden I can touch the shoulder and then come right back to this hand. I can switch to this side again or I can switch to this side. But the overall idea is that without making any changes in my upper body. Now we're gonna switch so that you can have a better idea of what's happening here, another angle of it. Same exact thing, we're moving, she's trying to touch my hand, sometimes she can touch it, maybe she doesn't, and I miss her shoulder completely, I miss her shoulder completely, and then from nowhere, I can touch her shoulder, and I can touch her shoulder, and I can touch her shoulder, touch her shoulder, touch her hand, shoulder, hand, shoulder, hand, without advancing. Now in the sparring session, yeah, there were times when she touched my hand, there were times when she was able to touch this hand, but that's what sparring is about. So what I encourage you to, you to do is try it in your own sparring. It's called Kabilan. Make sure that the puño has about two and a half hand space, and then that way when you switch, you're out, you are effectively changing the range without making any changes in your own body posture or in uh, in your steps so have fun with it so now we're going to cover the second strategy of mohara and the second strategy is called dalawahan dalawa in tagalog means two so this is uh, popularly known in escrima as dos manos which is two hands same exact idea but the the strategy overall is that once I go to this position, which you're already familiar with in Kabilaan, you know that at some point that you're gonna hand it off to this hand, and then you're going to strike. But now, instead of doing the handoff, you're going to hold on to it so it is now a two-handed strike. The overarching strategy of this is that it now allows you, at least from the way it was taught to me by my father, is that this is now a power strike. It is. It allows you as a practitioner to move, to um, change your movement, the quality of your movement, so that it is less wrist oriented. Now it's a full body movement. It is meant to stop the engagement altogether. So it's very powerful. And according to my father, Dizon's favorite target for uh, this kind of movement is actually the elbow, either the bottom of the elbow the side of the elbow or the top of the elbow. But the idea ultimately is that you could be doing your movements, but at some point you're going to make a decision based off of your understanding of your partner, your opponent as you're sparring, that this is going to be the decisive movement. You're gonna turn your whole body into it. So that's the idea. So as Robin and I move around, again, we're not wearing any protective gear. But what I'm going to do in this sparring is to show the emphasis of how the body turns into the strike in a full body, as opposed to just allowing the wrist and the momentum of the strike to deliver the effectiveness. So 
while I'm moving here. Once again with Robin. Again, I cannot touch her shoulder necessarily, but I can once I do Kabilan. So when we're moving, once again, she's trying to hit my hand, I'm trying to hit her hand as well. So she's doing this very successfully. But what I'm really trying to do is trying to find an angle where the elbow is exposed and then at some point I make that commitment, I make that absolute commitment to stop the whole thing. That's what, and note that my shoulder and my hip is moving in that exact direction. This is a very critical detail um, I want all of you to consider because this is, from my understanding, the usual uh, execution of um, two-handed striking with a short stick. It is still very wrist-oriented, and there's no power behind that, and you lose a lot of range. So if I do this with Robin, she has two hands that she can hit now, so I'm actually a bigger target. So she can do this all day. Right. This is an all day thing for her. So what I have to try to do is to use this hand to set up that one big strike that stops everything. So note that when I hit her, I hit the very top right here. I put my body weight into it, which allows me to thrust. Now I'm gonna do it on the other side. So when we're doing Dalawahan, be very mindful that when I do this overall strike over here, start thinking of engaging your core. Start thinking of firing, whether along the transverse plane or along the sagittal plane, where you're putting your weight into it. So effectively, you've shifted the fulcrum of your strikes from your arm to your core. Arm versus core, okay? So once again, we're going to move, right? And then, at any given moment, I stop the movement right here. Note the change in posture because now I've committed to it, right? Same exact thing. That's the elbow. That stops everything right here. From this movement, I can turn it into a thrust. Or, since my core is activated, I can apply pressure, so now I can destroy her structure without necessarily hurting her. So, my advice to you when you're sparring is that at any given moment, when you feel like it, just grab and tr think of trying to push somebody with the strike. So, when you're here, you're pushing somebody with the strike, or you are pushing somebody with the strike. Think of coming from your core rather than just coming from your hands. We're going to move on to the third strategy right now, which is dulo sa dulo. If anything, make note of the progression here. The kabilan is actually the first strategy because it's the easiest one to implement. I'm going to switch from one hand to another, one hand to another. Then we're going to go to dalawahan because now I don't have to let go. I don't have to let go. Once I can switch it to one hand, I can now just hold on to it. Now we're going to do what's called dulo sa dulo. Dulo in Tagalog means tip. Dulo sa dulo. So what I'm going to do now is instead of doing uh, two-handed dalawahan grip onto just one dulo, I'm now going to do it on two dulo. What I prefer here when it comes to dulo sa dulo is that you start here. Ultimately, you're going to end up here at some point. But the idea is that you now have um, this grip on two. Why is this important as it relates to overall Mohara strategy? You are now starting to get into that piece of uh, the purpose of Mohara training, which is for multiple opponents. And whenever you're dealing with multiple opponents in Tagalog, you will ultimately get into what's called Agawan. Agawan, Agaw means to take. So Agawan means you are now taking. So no matter how good you are with the stakes, when it's one on one, if you get a jump by a second person or a third person at some point, they're going to go for the weapon, they're going to grab the weapon. And if you're trained only in a single stick fighting where there's only one kind of grip, you will not be able to fight this position. So this kind of training is in preparation for Agawan, the ability to retain your weapon in a multiple opponent situation. But in this situation for sparring uh, and for illustrative purposes, 
we're going to demonstrate the uh, doodles a doodles strategy in a one-on-one -on -one situation. So if I'm here with Robin, the purpose of uh, doodles a doodle ultimately is to create some sort of guard. And from that guard, once let's say she hits, so let's say she's going for my head, angle one and then angle two, yep, and then angle two. So I have, she goes for angle one, I have this block over here, angle two, I have this block over here. So some of you who are a little more intermediate and advanced can already see some of the disarming capabilities here. So if she goes from angle number one, I can here, and then I can come in this side, we can already see what this looks like, right? We can do the exact same thing. But what we're trying to do here, ultimately, isn't necessarily to disarm. That's not what we're looking for here. What we're looking for is the doodle a doodle now gives you the opportunity to occupy center line because the doodle, the tip, is what's going to guide you to now occupy center line. This is going to be a very unique strategy in multiple opponent scenarios because if she's opponent number two and you're opponent number one and I'm coming over this way, I need to occupy center line as she's looking to come in. So if I'm moving and she decides to come in and from out of nowhere, I can do this, I've occupied center line. That's the purpose of doodle a doodle, okay? So now if I'm over here, if I'm moving with her in a one-on-one -on -one situation, I'm inspiring, once again, we're going for the hand, she's touching my hand, right? We're moving, moving, moving. At some point, I'm going to block with two, right? Let's do that again. Here, here, good, good, good. Now I stop. I stopped the entire altercation because I've occupied center line. That's the idea. Same thing. So if you're sparring and you're moving, move. Yes, good. She's doing really great, hitting my hand. I'm getting killed over here. And at some point I block and then I come in and point at center. That's the idea. Something that I want everybody to consider here um, is that this has proven effective in a lot of sparring scenarios. Uh, I think in some sparring formats, it's uh, technically illegal uh, because it's very powerful when your entire bodies, so just like your um, your dalawahan, where your core activates, your core can activate here too. And this becomes problematic if with Robin, all of a sudden I decide, right? So angle one, I come in here, right? Again, here, and then it's dalawahan, and I come in this way, liver shot and I turn my body into that, this is not going to be a very pleasant experience for her. Uh, and in a lot of sparring, uh, that's uh, when that kind of technique has been implemented. Uh, it, it actually um, resulted in some knockout blows. The liver was another favorite target of, um, of Dizong, although not necessarily using uh, the Dulu Sedulo, but it is one of the techniques that we teach using this uh, doula to doula strategy. So if you are looking to implement it in sparring, uh, be mindful of a couple of things. Similar to Dalawahan, you are using your core. You are using your car. You are using your core. But also, please be very safe with this because it is, um, it is a very painful strike to be on the receiving end of. But uh, do uh, use it in sparring, look to functionalize it, and have fun with it. Uh, this is the last uh, strategy in the Mohara system. And this is what we call in Tagalog, Dug Dug Bawas. Dug Dug Bawas. This in Tagalog means Dug Dug to add. Bawas is to subtract. So you're adding and you're subtracting. You experience some of this strategy in the first strategy, which is Kabilaan, meaning, by switching hands, you've essentially added, but then by bringing it back, you've also subtract, subtracted to the distance. So when you're sparring with somebody, especially if you're on the receiving end, uh, it's a very uh, disorienting feeling. When my father said he would spar with um, Dizon, he said it took him a while to figure out what was happening, but he thought at first that it was like magic because he thought he was safe in one distance and then he was not. But it was because of Kabilan, but also because of this very high level uh, technique called Dug Dug Bawas, which means the ability to add or subtract all using the same hand. I do want to make a few comments on this in that number one, when my father uh, first taught this to me, 
he said you have to be pretty advanced here because you're breaking one of the important cardinal rules of weapons training which is weapons retention but to me uh this is the great ingenuity and innovation of uh, Dizon in that he understood that the most important rule in um, combat weaponry is controlling the distance. So he ended up risking weapons retention because he had what I believe is probably superior attributes. So he knew that he would never lose the weapon because he had the confidence that he could retain it. He could retain it. And he could manage the distance by using just one hand. So if I'm over here with Robin, think of the same idea with uh, the Kabilan strategy. I'm over here and I cannot touch her shoulder. I cannot touch. So if we're moving around here with uh, defanging the snake, yeah, go ahead. And if we're sparring without making any changes to uh, my body position or to my distance, it's a simple change, all of a sudden, I can touch her shoulder. Note that I can go full power and absolutely miss. I will miss. I will miss. But note my body posture. I can now touch with ease. And then retract. So this whole time, while we're sparring, she thinks, right, she's safe in one distance. All of a sudden, she's not. And I didn't change anything, right? So I'm moving. Here, she has a big problem now. She doesn't know what distance she's in. We're gonna to switch to the other side. Same exact thing. Moving, moving, I miss. Moving, moving, not so much. Same idea. So note that in this sparring session, that again, just like any sparring session, she gets hit, I get hit, she gets hit, I get hit. But the disadvantage that she was under is that, as my dad likes to say, uh, that you're essentially fighting using a single stick, but you're fighting with two weapons. One that's a little longer, one that's a little shorter. There are many, many various applications to this technique. Uh, that I found very effective, not only um, in overall sparring, but also as an exercise in terms of improved dexterity and also creating sensitivity in the hand so that you know exactly where the weapon is at all times based on how you, um, based on your overall sensitivity to it. So it's frankly, it is my favorite strategy of the four, but the overall idea in all of this is that as a, uh, true practitioner of Mohara is that in sparring, you want to be able to implement all four fluidly. Uh, and hopefully this never happens to you, but the overall arching goal is that you can utilize it effectively in a multiple opponent scenario. And that concludes our episode today on Dizon's Mohara uh, with the four strategies. I do hope everybody enjoyed it. If you have any comments, questions, anything you'd like to add, uh, please provide the feedback in the comments below. So I really hope you enjoyed it. And uh, that's it for today's episode. Thank you very much.